Let's face it, cruise ports are a perfect place for tricks and scams as large numbers of cruisers pass through daily. We're only there a couple of hours before disappearing, never to return, our guard is down and the scammers and tricksters have had time to finesse what works to fleece us of our money. Until now, as I'm here to help you avoid them. Recently, my close friends Roger and Sue found on their first Mexican Riviera cruise that taxi drivers are masters at this game. There are at least five taxi tricks that friends and I, unfortunately, have fallen for to watch out for. They got caught up with one of the oldest tricks in the taxi driver's book. As they like to self-explore, they grabbed a taxi in Puerto Vallarta to head into town and the beach. They were quoted a price, but once they got there, the taxi driver said, oh, no, 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 you have to pay double because the price I quoted was per person. Then he doubled down and stung them with another classic trick, which is saying he didn't have any change for the notes that they were trying to give him, and so they ended up paying even more. So as well as checking clearly what the rate is, make sure that you have small notes to pay for the taxi. Another friend of mine, Ben, was in St. Kitts last year and asked a taxi driver to take him to a beach and come back and fetch him at a set time. The driver said fine. He asked to be paid up front to guarantee coming back. But of course, he never returned. The last time I was in St. Lucia, instead of going on a cruise line tour, and as there's not much to do around the port, I used a taxi driver offering to give a tour of the island. But he kept taking me to shopping venues and places like a beach with a bar and restaurant where he clearly knew them and was getting some sort of kickback rather than taking me to see the kind of must-see places that I wanted to see. People on my recent Nile River cruise had the same experience with using a Cairo taxi driver who promised a magnificent tour and they spent as much time calling into papyrus shops, rug shops, jewelry stores as they did at the Great Pyramids. So if you're going to get a taxi driver tour, be absolutely clear about where they're going to take you and stress that you don't want to go shopping. Link to this is the scam that happened to me in Cozumel, where I'd found a great looking and really super well-rated beach club with restaurant online. I asked a taxi driver to take me there. Now he said, look, I know a much nicer place. I said, fine. He dropped me off and going in, it was clear it was a dump. And he again appeared to be getting commissions by taking people there. So always have a good dose of skepticism. I also learned that when I was on a cruise with a stop in Kuala Lumpur, a taxi driver taking me to another site heard me saying I really wanted to go up the Petronas Towers, but I hadn't booked and it was sold out. He claimed he could get, uh, get me a ticket through a friend of his. Of course, after paying up for this ticket, I found once I got there that, and tried to use them that it was a fake ticket scam used to catch lots of tourists like me. So beware of taxis. If you don't use taxis and want to hire a car or scooter in a port, watch out for this next one. On around the UK cruise, I hired a car from one of the biggest car hire companies when I was in Edinburgh to go out and explore my mum's hometown nearby. I checked it over uh, when I was fetching it and also when dropping it off. Now, when we dropped it off, I had to leave it in the parking lot as the office was closed, as agreed. My credit card, though, was eventually charged £700, that's about $850, for supposed damage. Now, I knew that I had not done anything, and it took months, literally months of arguing and getting the credit card company involved before finally getting them to back down. Now, I've heard of this happening in other ports around the world where cruisers have been charged for supposed damage to hire cars, scooters, wave riders, and so on. It's easy money, as often fighting it just wears you down. So now what I do is I take a video with my phone when I'm picking up something I'm hiring and again when dropping it off all around to be able to argue that one convincingly. As I mentioned, I'm just back from a Nile River cruise when I'm making this and I saw many of the successful scams used in markets and popular sites around the world here. And one of them is the free gift one. It often actually even starts on many ships where the shopping advisor holds talks and they hand out the first free charm, which they say you can then collect additional free ones to make up a bracelet or a necklace at stores like FE or Dimes International. Of course, it's a trick to get us into stores for well-organized pushy selling. 
but watch out for market vendors like those Omanar Cruz did to Jen, who kind of, I, I befriended her on the trip. She was handed a bracelet, hats, all sorts of free gifts. Once she actually took one of them early on, she was then aggressively hassled and, and they eventually demand a payment unless you bought something bigger. So beware people giving you free gifts or samples. If anyone's handing out anything, do not take it. Now in some Mediterranean ports like Barcelona, exotic looking gypsy style ladies often hand out small bunches of lavender or flowers to cruisers and then they just ask for a small donation. Now someone on a tour I was on in Barcelona took it, not realizing it was so the lady, or what I suspect was more likely an accomplice, could see where they took the money from and how much they had with them. Because a short while later, they realized they had been pickpocketed. By the way, watch where you keep money. If you are a cruiser that likes to support, say, those street vendors or give to beggars, keep small bills or coins in a separate pocket or place. So if you ever reach for and bring out money, it's limited and suggests you don't have a lot and actually are a poor target. And if your small bills pocket is pickpocketed, it's not a big loss to you. Pickpockets especially target crowds in all the big cities that cruisers call in Europe because those narrower streets, the packed sites, uh, you know, you have people often jostling and bumping into one another. It's a perfect cover for pickpocketers. By the way, one old trick that I have seen someone try a few years back on an MSC Cruises tour in Rome was the classic spill trick. One of the gents in our tour group had someone bump into them and spill some gelato on them. They, the person doing it, apologized profusely, started to wipe it off with tissues. Of course, what they were really doing is shaking him down to pickpocket him. He pushed them off and he later told the group that he knew about this particular scam. And so he was ready for it and actually kept his credit cards and money in a money belt inside his shirt anyway. So very sensible. If anyone spills anything on you, do not let them help. Which brings me to another nothing is free and money fleecing scam that I've seen in popular cruise ports. The most outrageous of these that I've seen is in Rome, where men dressed as Roman centurions hang around outside the Colosseum offering to pose with cruisers and other people visiting. But things can get nasty really quickly. If you offer them a small tip like say five euros, that's about five US dollars after the photos, they will demand way more and can and do get really aggressive. One report in the Times UK newspaper just this past November reported the men allegedly posed for a picture with an Irish visitor. Then they marched him to a cash point and forced him to hand over 200 euros. That's about $200. Another Italian claimed he offered them 40 euros and they wanted more and started physically attacking him. So that's kind of extreme. But if you ever come across people in costume in any port, agree very clearly the price before you start taking the photo. Of course, also beware of people spotting you taking selfies and offering to take your photograph, especially if they ask you to unlock your phone to do it. I've heard of people, you know, getting you to unlock your phone, then running off with the phone because it's now unlocked and of value because they can do stuff with it. Instead, I always ask someone else, you know, someone on the tour or someone I recognize from the ship, or other clearly tourists that I've seen about to take the photo. Also, if anyone in a foreign port confronts you, saying you took their photo without their approval and demands you unlock your phone and show them, don't do it for the same reason I just mentioned. In past videos, I have spoken about my friends Graham and Pete as they started to go cruising and I told the story about what they do. And I also told you how they are big souvenir buyers when traveling. And I keep warning them repeatedly about a couple of cruise port scams when it comes to goods. Obviously, they know anyway that those are not genuine Rolex watches or Louis Vuitton bags being sold by hawkers on the street. But I do warn them if they're buying expensive items in stores, watch out for two scams and tricks. I know people who've got caught up by stores relying on the fact that cruisers are leaving port and cannot get back to them. Simon, a follower of the channel, recently sent me a message saying he bought a fancy watch in a small store in Jamaica. Once he was back at the ship, he found it just wasn't working. Because it was close to departure time, he called the store, they kind of fobbed him off. And as he couldn't get back to the store, they actually refused to refund him. It was a faulty watch and there was very little that he could do. 
I heard Ilana from the Life Well Cruised YouTube channel talking in a video recently about buying a handbag in one of the stores when she was in Turkey. The store owner was very chatty and actually distracted her while someone else in the store packed up her purchase. Once she got back to the ship, she realized they had switched the bag. It was not the high quality bag that she had bought. So watch out for that. I always stress to Graham and Pete to be wary of market and beach vendors. They didn't listen. Graham found out the hard way buying supposedly real Cuban cigars from a beach vendor in the Caribbean to take back to a connoisseur, a friend of theirs back home. Of course, the friend told them they were absolutely not. My friends Roger and Sue on their Mexican Riviera cruise told me about this charming old gentleman going around the beach telling everybody about his handcrafted sculptures and his home handmade jewelry, which people were loving and buying. Back in town, they realized all the cheap souvenir stores were full of exactly the same items. They were all mass produced. I'm personally always skeptical of stall holders pointing out really unique and rare items because there is no way of verifying them. My view is if I love it, I like the price, I'll buy it for that reason because that's what it's worth to me, not because it's some mystical value. And when buying, there is one expensive scam though that I fell for, but I will never again because it cost me so much. I got caught out by this when I was in Buenos Aires, shortly after arriving there on a South American cruise not so long ago. I saw some really nice shirts that I really liked in a small clothes shop when I was out and about. Now I went in, they told me the price of the two shirts and it was quite expensive. It was going to be about 250 US dollars, but I thought, okay, fine, I'm going to do it. Now they told me it was going to convert to that. I was a bit embarrassed. I wasn't quite up on the exchange rates. I didn't want to seem untrusting by taking my phone to check the rates. So I took them at face value and I paid with my credit card. When the bill came a few weeks later, they had put through what was almost $700. And of course, because I had just gone with it, put my pin in, that was it. So now I check any purchases using a currency exchange app. I use an app called XE and I do that before buying to avoid that one. I don't want to be caught out again. I'm wondering whether you've fallen for scams like I have in a cruise board. If you have, leave a comment to help warn others. But before you do that, why don't you watch this video where I talk about cruises like my good friend Helen and how she was tricked before she even left home. See you over there. 